So then guys, I had the new MacBook Pros and the Mac Mini now for around about a month or so. And one of the big questions I keep getting asked about is throttling. What about the 14 inch MacBook Pro would say the M4 Pro or even the M4 Max, cause that's the most powerful chip you can get inside of it. How badly does this throttle compare to say the 16.2 inch MacBook Pro? And then also at the same time, does it really matter? And also are we most likely in day to day kind of activities actually going to experience any throttling on either of these MacBook Pros and that is it worth actually spending out a bit more cash to get the 16 inch model because you know it's going to be not likely to throttle as much as the 14 inch model. Well today we're going to see if that is definitely going to be the case if you did actually decide to pick yourself a 14 or 16 inch model. So first of all what I've decided to do is I've decided to actually monitor my actual sort of testing and things like this using a tool but then also what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two kinds of tests on everything. So I'm going to run all these sort of different tests we're going to do today uh, you know including sort of benchmarks of CPU and the GPU with actually using the system fan so this is Apple's recommendations of how cool that we should actually keep these MacBook Pros and then also I'm going to use the tools maximum amount of RPM so this is turning up the actual sort of speed of the fans to maximum the second there's a bit of heat actually generating to see if it actually changes the results and also you know what the sort of throttling sort of results we're going to get between both these MacBook Pros. So first of all what I've decided to do is I've decided to run Cinebench and do a 10 minute test on single core performance and also on multi-core performance and as you can see right here obviously I ran the test on having it on the normal system fans and then also I've done this on the actual sort of maximum sort of fan setting to see what sort of differences we get between both of these MacBook Pros. And here are the results, first of all, for Cinebench 2024. Well, we can see here the 14.2 inch MacBook Pro had system fans that we got a score in single core of 176. And then obviously then the 14.2 MacBook Pro again with maximum fans on, then we got 178. And then with the 16.2 inch MacBook Pro again, with the system fans on, we got 176, the same as what we got with the 14 inch. And then with the 16.2 um, inch with the maximum fan switched on, we got exactly the same in single core performance performance. So really no differences there whatsoever. And one thing I just want to quickly say, I forgot to say this to you guys, is that both of these MacBook Pros have the maximum sort of cores in the M4 Maxes. So what I'm talking about, I'm talking like the 16 core sort of CPU inside of it. So this is made up from correct, four efficiency cores, and then obviously 12 performance cores. And it's exactly the same in both of these. And the same for GPU cores as well, as we'll get onto in a second. They both have the 40 core setup inside of them. But moving on then from this let's go back to multi-core then on the sheets we can see that the macbook pro with just using the normal system fans on the cinebench 10 minutes that it scored 1928 and then with maximum fans on it scored a little bit more it scored actually 2001 it was brilliant to see it break this barrier but then with the 16.2 inch macbook pro well look at this the single core comes out 1931 what's well, slightly more by you know about three points more than the 14.2 inch on system fans but then on maximum fans so this is exactly a maximum so this got 1998 was again three points behind the score of what we got with the 14.2 inch macbook pro and just in case you want to know i did run these tests three times and these are the averages of the scores that I've got. This did actually take me a long time because obviously 10 minutes sort of benchmarks, boy, this took me a long time to do. So yeah, you can imagine, but it was quite interesting to actually see. I think this could be what we say as silicon lottery in what we're getting here. But at the same time too, I do think it shows already just here in Cinebench that there isn't a lot between them. Even if you push out the CPUs, you know, up to that from max. Now, obviously I could do the 30 minute test and a lot of you guys could say I should have done that, but we'd be here forever. But I think even the 10 minute throttling test is showing the results. There isn't much difference here between both of them. So this whole thing about throttling and the big thing and the difference between them, straight away, we're not really seeing anything. But one thing I would say is making a difference is 
the maximum kind of speeds that we do get. And that's if you push up the fan speeds up to maximum, there is some difference going on there. We do actually get slightly more performance. And I do want to talk about Geekbench next of all, but just before that, I want to talk about today's sponsor. So then guys, just quickly, I want to tell you about today's sponsor from Wondershare and specifically I want to tell you about Recover It, what is an amazing, powerful tool to recover old files that you may have deleted in the past. Let me show you more about this. You can scan any hard drive that is attached to your MacBook or even the one that is built in. And you can even recover from say SD cards and also external drives like from major brands such as SanDisk, Kingston, Seagate, Western Digital. So this is really great to see and there's also a 99.5% recovery success rate on external devices. And the scan is quite quick when you're using it on something like an SSD what's inside this MacBook that we've got right here. And there's even even up to 25% faster scanning on APFS and you can even preview in real time the dates of files before actually recovering them. And then after this what we can do is we can navigate through and we can retrieve a file just like how I want to retrieve this movie right here. I can then set where I want to recover the file to, so my documents here, and then the recovery is completed and we can check it out inside the folder. And if you want to check out Recover It, make sure you check out all the details that are in the description below of this video because this is definitely a tool that so many of us need to have in our lives. And with that, let's return back to the main video. So moving on then, you're going to ask me about Geekbench. Well, what does that show? Well, the interesting thing about Geekbench is that all the different tests that it does, and you can see a bit of a demonstration here that it's sort of flicking towards one and then it does another test after that. Really the actual CPU temperatures don't get hot enough to actually make a difference, even if we turn up, say, the maximum fan. Now, I did configure the tool to actually, you know, program the fans to kick in at a lower amount of CPU temperature, and every so often you'd hear a kind of a little woo, you know, sort of bit of noise coming on with this, but really nothing much really kicked in with the fans because it moved on to the next test after, and then obviously the CPU sort of was down, the temperatures are down a bit, so, you know, it didn't need to kick in the fans again, and really this reflects this in the chart. You can see there's hardly any difference here with say the system fan and the maximum fans in single core performance whatsoever and the same with multi-core performance. There's really nothing in it. Obviously some of you guys are going to notice here that it's quite interesting that with the system fan with the 14.2 inch MacBook Pro it's slightly more in multi-core you know with the that and with the maximum fans it's a tiny bit more than it was when the 14 inch to the 16 inch so yeah there's nothing really going on here and again I ran these tests three times just to get the kind of average sort of scores that we're getting right here in this chart and you can see there's nothing really in it whatsoever again. So really I'm going to say Geekbench, but there was not much point doing this. And what I'm going to say is I'm not going to bother doing say the metal core sort of scoring because I did try it and you can see here that the temperatures were just not raising again. I just couldn't be bothered with this to actually show you the results because I don't think you're going to really get a good result in actually showing a comparison if it makes any difference whatsoever. But one area where I did do a test, and that was to do the actual GPU test back in Cinebench, because obviously you can push that out for a 10 minute or 30 minute. And I did three lots of the test again on each one of these MacBook Pros, random and everything. So let's have a look at the results that we got right here. So we can see here the scores that obviously with the 14.2-ish, with the system fans, we got about 16,402. With the maximum fans, you can see that pushed up to 16,782. It does make a difference there. And then look at the 16 inch, you know, we got 16,396, slightly less than the 14.2 inch, really nothing. I'd say this is exactly the same. But then with the actual maximum fans, they got 16,798. So slightly more than the 14 inch. But again, it's really not making a lot of difference here. And I think that we're identifying straight away really as much as that we've heard, you know, people, YouTubers and creators saying that, oh, the 14 inch is absolutely rubbish. It throttles all the time. 
it's really not being the case here, is it, with these results that we are seeing right here? You know, I think we've got to remember, and I'll talk about this at near the end of the video, at the moment, it's proving the point that unless you actually push your MacBooks to the absolute fullest, really, you're not going to see much difference between the 16 and the 14 inch. But let's do one more test um, to do with graphics, and I want to test out actually doing a game. So what I've decided to run is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Let's have a look then to see what we got here. And you can see then that the difference is, is turning on the maximum fans all the time to actually get a difference. So with the 14.2 inch with the system fan, we've got about 90 frames per second. And then with the 16.2 inch with the system fans, we've got 91 frames per second. And then with the 14.2 inch and the 16.2 inch, you know, you can see with two frames per second difference here, 106 to 108 frames per second. This is hardly nothing between both of them. And do remember, I was running this at 25 60 by 1700 on high frames per second and there is not much in it whatsoever. The 16 inch obviously is getting, you know, one or two more frames per second, but you know, to pay that difference of, you know, I, I can't remember what it is now, an extra $400 or something like this to get the larger screen, you know, if you want it for the larger screen, do it for that, but I wouldn't be paying out more money to get a larger one because you're thinking it's going to throttle far less than the 14 inch. I think this is what this is proving here. There's not much difference between it. And then finally, what I've decided to do is I've decided to do my famous sort of Mac Mini 10 minute Hevec 8-bit video in Final Cut Pro and let's have a look at the results right here. And obviously with this chart, obviously the lower the better. And we can see here with the 14.2 inch with the system fans, it did the export in 132 seconds. And then obviously with the 16 inch version, you know, with the system 131 second, one second difference. And then maximum fans, look again, look, 14.2 inch, 129 seconds, 16 inch, 128 seconds. And again, I do stress, I ran these tests three times and I got the averages of them. And in fact, it was quite funny that the actual test came within like a second of each other each of the three times. So yeah, it definitely proved the point that they're very, very similar what we've got here. And again, just looking at this chart one more time, really, are you going to spend that extra bit of money just to save one second? I don't think so. So in conclusion, I think what we've learned here is that really as much as, you know, we're saying that buying a 14 inch version could be worse than getting the 16 inch version. Yeah, the 16 inch version is ever so slightly better. You know, I don't even think it's 1% better on average, you know, in calling. There's hardly any difference between it. And in some cases, the 14 inch version did better. Now, some of you are gonna say that's because you might have a bad M4 Max inside of this. I don't think so. I really do think that these were, you know, very, very similar scores. And that's because, you know, Apple wouldn't be pushing these out unless there were problems with them. And I think the other thing we've got to take away from this is that I've pushed out both of these MacBook Pros, you know, with maximum fans and also pushing them out to their limits on some of these sort of tests that we've done today. And generally, most of the time, you're not going to be pushing your MacBook Pro to that kind of level for, you know, eight hours a day if you're going to be using it. You know, I understand that you're going to be importing media, exporting media, and those fans are going to whir up and things like this. And also, if you're going to be doing GPU or CPU heavy tasks, but they only run for a little bit. And generally, sort of speaking, you know, you're not really going to notice the difference between both these machines. And I think that's the key thing here. I think a lot of creators out there on YouTube and a lot of other reviewers out there are making out that the 14 inch, do not buy it with an M4 Max. And I beg to differ here because at the end of the day, I just don't see how you're going to be utilizing all that power all the time, every single day. It's just not possible to do it. And if you are gonna be doing that, I have no idea what kind of task you are running, what's gonna be pushing out the CPU and GPU for like eight hours a day, non-stop. It's just a bit unheard of in, you know, in my mind, unless you're running like a Bitcoin machine or something like this, but you wouldn't be buying one of these for that reason. But I think it comes clear, you know, that really the 14 inch with the M4 Max 
is just as good as a 16 inch in my opinion here. But you know, those are my thoughts and the results have shown that today. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think that buying an M4 Max, you know, is still worth it in a 14 inch body, especially after seeing the results today? Let me know in the comments below. And with that as well, guys, it's time to wrap up this video too. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. Also, if you wanna hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.